opportunity to progress onto research degrees if that's something that you're interested in. And one thing that we do pride ourselves on is that all of our students are treated you know, like a person and not just a number. Uh, Notre Dame is a much smaller university than some of the other bigger universities, um, but we are smaller on purpose so that we can offer small class sizes, but we can also offer really great one-on-one -on -one interactions with your academics. And that's something that a lot of our students uh, really uh, find worthwhile. Uh, you can have the confidence to ask any questions and our academics can be um, available to you should you have any questions about your course. Uh, should you come on campus for some of your studies? Um, our Darlinghurst campus actually houses our School of Medicine and School of Nursing. Um, you may not be aware but Notre Dame does actually have two campuses on Sydney, one in Broadway and our second one in Darlinghurst. And our Darlinghurst campus is um, a dedicated campus for students studying nursing or medicine degrees. Um, it is quite centralized. It's just a short walk from either museum or King's Cross station. Uh, it's also directly across the road from St. Vincent's Hospital. Uh, because it's a dedicated campus for our nursing and medicine students, it does have those necessary facilities. We do have an anatomy museum as well as simulated wards, which become quite beneficial for our students. Um, uh, Stephen will actually talk about the facilities that we have on offer a bit later as well. One thing that Notre Dame does also pride itself on is our innovative education. Like I said before, we do offer those really small class sizes and a more personalized approach to learning. Um, a model that we have actually adopted in our medicine program is one that really uh, focuses on critical and re reflective thinking, uh, learning, ethical responsibility, as well as philosophical approaches. Um, and that's something that we've then adopted into our health and medical sciences courses. So I will pass over to the academics here tonight just to introduce themselves. Um, first up we have Professor Monica Robreton. Uh, hello there. Um, I um, um, first uh, trained as a cardiothoracic surgeon and uh, I practiced in pediatric cardiothoracic surgery. I spent a fair bit of time also in the area of research and so in the medical program at Notre Dame I am uh, the theme leader of clinical and applied research. Um, however, in the latter years, I've spent a lot more time in epidemiology and public health and in um, 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 academic development. Um, I've developed a number of um, courses and programs over time and uh, I'm, um, I've been in closely involved with the development of the graduate diploma of health and medical sciences where I am a program director and I'd be happy to answer some questions about it later on. Thank you. I'll pass and on uh, to uh, um, uh, Associate Professor Sharon Herx to tell you about her background and career highlights. Sharon, I think you might be on mute. Sorry about that. Um, so hello to Daniel and Imogen and Arthur. Uh, so I'm Sharon Herkes. I, um, I'm new to the University of Notre Dame. I've only been here for about eight weeks. I'm very excited to have been appointed as the program coordinator for the Graduate Diploma of Health and Medical Sciences. Prior to being at Notre Dame, I have spent um, about 15 years at the University of Sydney. Um, where I have uh, spent most of my research has been pedagogical, so that means relating to uh, ways of improving teaching strategies. I spent quite a bit of time on uh, reviewing uh, teaching practices um, and transitioning courses to blended learnings. So that means partly being face to face and partly being online. Um, I spent a couple of years coordinating first and second year medicine at the University of Sydney and spent a year as a theme leader in innovation uh, curriculum design in health. Um, but really happy now to be part of the Notre Dame team. And I shall pass on to Stephen. Thank you, Sharon. And uh, thank you for all coming out tonight and uh, watching our presentation. 
Uh, Mr. Hanson, my name is Stephen, and I recently um, joined the university in 2019 as a recent PhD graduate from the University of Toronto, Canada. So if you notice my weird accent, that's where I'm from. Um, so my research background is in motor control and skill acquisition, and I actually specialize in robotic guidance. And at the School of Medicine, I'm a research associate, and I'm also the program um, administrator of the Graduate Diploma of Health and Medical Sciences. So if you do take this course, you will see a lot of me throughout this program as I not only help with administration, but I also help uh, lecture and help with the labs in Human Body 1 and 2, which you'll learn about very soon. Um, that's just enough about me. Thank you so much. Now, uh, today uh, we can't have Leanne Harvey with us, uh, who is uh, one of our administrators uh, administrative officers at the school. Um, she has joined us a couple of years ago. Um, she is an incredibly dedicated and highly organized person. She helps us a lot with the organization of the course, but also makes the wonderful uh, afternoon teas that wait for the students when they arrive for face-to-face -face teaching. So you really need to get to know and um, show your appreciation for Leanne. You can even put your special orders for the biscuits that are your favorites uh, before the lectures that you're attending. So remember who you need to speak to for good biscuits at the School of, uh, um, School of Medicine. Now, so it looks like it's uh, me to give you a little bit of a background about the Graduate Diploma of Health and Medical Science. For those who have looked um, at um, our website, you may realize that uh, we already have now uh, our first um, cohort that uh, um, uh, is 10 years uh, now is, uh, um, they have um, uh, it's the 10th uh, graduating cohort that we've had at the School of Medicine. Um, and um, um, for us, um, uh, we didn't really start with a background of uh, uh, offering a program in biomedical sciences, which a lot of the other universities that have medical schools um, um, have done uh, over the years. Um, we felt that uh, probably there were enough um, biomedical programs that we really didn't need to reinvent the wheel and offer yet another one. Um, however, uh, looking at our um, enrolled students and looking at what the um, students needed, um, uh, speaking to the students who were doing the medical program, the ones who were trying to get into the program, we realized that um, there is um, a, a gap, well, first of all, for the students who got into medicine but uh, coming from a, a non uh, biomedical science backgrounds, and they represent between about 25 and 40 percent in different cohorts of our students, um, they found it um, a little bit more difficult to get into um, understanding the biomedical basic sciences, which are studied in years one and two. And that, to some extent, um, is reflected on their results, which are uh, for the first three years possibly not quite as good as the ones of the students coming from biomedical backgrounds, although eventually by years three and four that uh, evens out. Um, but also um, the students themselves telling us that they found it difficult to actually learn all the anatomy and physiology and all the other sciences. So we felt a degree that could cover those uh, subjects would be very attractive for students who are looking, to, uh, trying to do medicine. Um, and might fill in some gaps for people coming from backgrounds such as, uh, um, as I said, law, or, um, or teaching, or arts, or um, other areas where uh, which fall outside that spectrum, or may have done architecture, or may have done uh, maybe engineering, where all those skills are probably uh, not really uh, in evidence. Um, so this is one. Uh, um, student group, potential student group that we're trying to target with this degree. Um, further on, um, uh, we um, are looking at people who might not want to do medicine, but they might want to broaden their um, um, professional skills. For example, 
their lawyers and they want to work in medical legal uh, cases, yet they don't really have the knowledge about medicine that uh, is required to understand and interpret important documents. Um, and uh, there might be teachers who want to teach in PDHPE, but they really need, again, more foundation and uh, anatomy and physiology to do that. Or there might be a town planner who wants to um, really keep up with the times, but they really don't have the public health knowledge that um, is required. Now, another group, um, again, going back to the potential candidates wanting to do medicine, um, students who might be outside the 10 year rules, meaning that their last degree is more than 10 years old. So they cannot apply to medicine until they have another degree. So the graduate diploma could meet that uh, uh, requirement for them or um, also some students maybe had such a good time uh, when they were in their under undergraduate degrees that they didn't really have a high enough GPA to get into medicine. For them, a graduate diploma will give them one year rather than going back to the beginning and doing a whole biomed degree um, that enables them to lift their GPA. And finally, um, there is a facilitated pathway to interview for medicine that I'll be discussing later on. So I won't really muddy the waters with that. I'll leave that for um, later in the talk. But basically, um, um, you can see that the graduate diploma was structured as a way of uh, combining teaching in two graduate certificates, one which focuses on the um, um, uh, the um, um, medical sciences, uh, and one which uh, focuses on the health sciences. So this is um, on the left-hand side of the screen, we see the health sciences and the subjects which are part of that degree. And on the right-hand side, you see uh, what subjects we're teaching in the graduate certificate. Now, um, furthermore, uh, we have an online, a fully online graduate certificate for just this coming semester. And this is for students who want to take advantage of the government uh, um, initiative of um, offering students an opportunity to do um, degrees uh, over a period of six months. And so therefore, um, these four subjects that you see listed below the graduate certificate of uh, health sciences are fully online for semester two, 2020. Um, and uh, the graduate certificate in medical sciences will be largely offered online, but there will be also opportunities for face-to-face -face teaching, particularly for human body one and cellular and molecular uh, biology, and also for human body two, to be able for, for students to be able to uh, also have some practical exposure to um, the um, cadavers and to all the other resources that we have in this context. Um, so now the two um, um, subjects you'll see uh, for the grad dip in uh, um, um, uh, the uh, health sciences, they're studying MEDI 5001 through to MEDI 5004. Um, and these ones, as I said, for this coming semester, they're delivered fully online. Um, the graduate diploma of the um, uh, medical sciences study subjects from 5005 through to 5008. Now, uh, the normal way in which we deliver the course is um, we offer in the coming semester two subjects uh, from uh, the one grad dip and two subjects of the other. And in that uh, mode, by for students who are enrolled in the graduate diploma, if they start their study next semester, they will be able to graduate um, uh, before the middle of the following year. Um, and that would enable them to uh, um, uh, have um, make an application for uh, um, applying for medicine for um, in 2021 for admission in 2022 uh, with having the graduate diploma counting towards that degree. Um, if at the same time uh, students choose to do just the graduate certificate first, for example, the online certificate from 
for health sciences, um, they would have to take 18 months to complete that degree because human body one and human uh, is a prerequisite for studying human body two. So the students cannot take it in the same semester. Um, and so the entry requirements for the uh, grad deep you'll see listed on the right hand side. So you need to have a completed undergraduate bachelor's degree. Um, and um, um, you could either do the grad certs sequentially or you could do the two um, streams of study together so that you are enrolled directly in the graduate diploma of health and medical sciences. So the commencement date for all these subjects is the 27th of July um, and the mode of delivery is fully online for the grad uh, set in health sciences and it's a blended approach to the extent that is possible depending on the regulations related to uh, COVID um, for the other degree. And I think that uh, from here I'll pass on to uh, um, uh, Sharon to take you through the grad cert in health sciences. Mm -hmm. So the graduate certificate in health sciences, uh, so this is the one that Monica's just gone through. There are two ways you can do it in the coming semester. You can either do it full time and do all four courses as the short course. Uh, and that's the short course that is supported by the government subsidy. The alternative to that is that you do the graduate certificate in health sciences part time. So you only do two of those four courses. And at the same time, you can be enrolled in the Graduate Certificate of Medical Sciences and you will do two courses out of that. That would make up your four courses for uh, semester two of this year. So this certificate is, um, has a wonderful innovative curriculum, uh, looks at some really interesting areas. The four courses um, cover uh, bioethics, they cover communication, the Australian healthcare system and environment, society and health. So uh, a beautiful collection of courses that you really don't see anywhere else, giving you a really broad, um, expansive um, knowledge of the Australian healthcare system and, um, and where health sits in, um, in, the global, in the global arena as well. Uh, so similarly, as Monica's just gone through, you need that bachelor degree um, for your requirement. And this starts on the 27th of July. So I'll just take you through the individual courses now, just give you a little bit of information about each one. So scientific literacy and communication. So in this one, students evaluate scientific communication, um, not only how we communicate with other people, but also how science is communicated in the popular press. Um, this is very topical. At the moment, we have a lot of uh, community education and communication going on with the COVID pandemic. Uh, and so you, you know, this is a, a real life example of how we have to communicate with different audiences and how you pitch things so that people really understand the science. At the moment, you could probably ask people in the general population what an R number is, and they would probably be able to tell you. Whereas a few months ago, they would have absolutely no idea about that scientific terminology. So this is also a little bit about scientific um, education as well. In this course, you will develop some briefs, the kind of briefs that would go to decision makers or towards the general community on, um, on health issues. You'll learn to strategize on ways to improve health literacy and um, you'll develop a health communication portfolio. So we might move on to the, the next course. So environment, society and health. This is a, a great subject that actually starts to look at things like climate change and the way it has an impact on our health. Uh, the course has a, a fairly big focus on Australia, but then expands out using examples from the Pacific region. And it compares issues in the global context of sustainable development goals. Uh, in this course, you identify differences between the health of individuals and in populations. You will evaluate intervention strategies to improve population health, and you will do a systems analysis of the impact of climate change on health populations. So a really, really interesting course as well. 
The next one, bioethics in professional life. This is one of the few bioethics courses that are specific to the health context that you will find across universities. Um, by completing this course, you, um, you gain a great toolkit, you're taught a toolkit for evaluating ethical dilemmas, which you can then use in your future life. Um, there's a lot of case studies that are used here for your study. And there are a lot of authentic examples of um, uh, everyday um, bioethical dilemmas. And you can see the topics that are covered there. Um, really interesting things, the ethics of the beginning of life or the end of life issues, um, bioethics and the law, uh, bioethics in contemporary medical practice, not only how um, in medical practice there are ethical situations but in the research medical research there are ethical um, considerations too technology tends to move very quickly and ethical dilemmas often occur before the law catches up with how we should deal with some of these things um, so the australian healthcare system this is an amazing course. It is coordinated by the Dean of Medicine. It runs, um, has a number of interactive workshops with uh, panels with a lot of, uh, with experts on there. It examines the Australian healthcare system, its finances, its structure, its policies, the delivery, um, and the lectures here are from health industry leaders. Uh, so, um, yeah, so again, uh, a course that you don't find in very many places. Many people in Australia uh, have no idea how the Australian healthcare system works. And here it's brought all together for you and presented in a, in a wonderful way with lots of experts to help you through. And I think that's all for me. So I'm going to pass over now to Stephen. He's going to take you through the graduate certificate in medical sciences. Thank you, Sharon. So the graduate certificate in medical sciences, um, like the health sciences, has four different courses within it. And that gives you, provides you an overview of the human body and how it works. Uh, and it actually takes you through some of the fundamental sciences that underpin uh, human health and well-being. Um, it gives students a background of the, the uh, medical sciences. And it's ideal for students that actually either come from a non-science background, then they maybe want to seek to get this background information or to potentially transition into medical school, but also students that have a science background and want to just refresh those skills in order to um, potentially get in the medical program as well. And just for, as Monica was saying earlier, other professionals who just want to learn more about the human body. And if, if you study this program full time, it can be completed in one year. So you take two, two courses one semester. So next semester you'd start off with human body one and cellular and molecular biology. And then the next semester following, you will then have the second component of human body, human body two, with research methods in health. And as specified earlier, the entry requirements are a completed undergraduate bachelor degree. And this is a blended mode of study. So the first course that I'm going to be talking about is human body one. And this course, I help lecture in as well as uh, Sharon and Monica. So you'll see a lot of us throughout both Human Body 1 and Human Body 2. It's a great course, not just because we're in it, but because it actually takes a combined and systematic approach to the study of the, human, the structure and function of the human body. And we actually take you through the different organ systems in the body with teachers who actually teach in the medical school itself. We have live, uh, sorry, not live, we have uh, plastinated specimens, as in the photo here. This is an actual photo taken within our anatomy museum in which uh, Dr. Ali Malik will take you through the different organ systems and gives you a hands-on experience of what these systems look like in real, in real life. We also use a practical component to help teach the physiology where you, we use um, technology such as, uh, it's called Lab Tutor, in which you'll be able to actually physically partake in different uh, labs in order to understand the physiological processes of these different systems. So the second course we're looking at uh, is cellular and molecular biology. And this outlines the principles of cell and molecular biology as underpinnings of life and organism function. And there's many topics covered in this course, including cell structure and function, control of gene expression, um, the regulation of gene function, and, and several others, as you can see. 
but this course also takes um, has a blended approach in which there will be um, tutorial sessions in which um, clinical sessions about genetic issues as they pertain to actual patient care. So you get to get some hands-on experience talking to someone who is um, dealing with this research right now in the current, current uh, scientific field. So this is the second course um, followed up. So this is a, after you've taken human body one, you'll be able to take human body two. And this is continuing on the different systems using an, an anatomy and physiology, physio physiology approach, sorry, um, where you, we go further into the, the body's organ systems and turning uh, neuroanatomy. Uh, we learn about body defense, lymphatic and immune system, talk about normal human development. Uh, we also go into principles of microbiology and the roles of these microorganisms in human infection. And then finally, the reproductive system. Again, this is using a blended learning approach in which we have practical labs and tutorials throughout. And finally, um, research methods in health. This help course helps develop students' understanding of research processes used in biomedical sciences. And this actually will help you um, understand the different types of study designs that are in um, science and understand the statistical importance of statistical power and effect size. This will also especially in this current COVID situation, help you understand research findings and how to actually interpret them appropriately and effectively to see what you're reading and to understand what you're reading. Um, finally, in this program, you'll, in this course, you'll also understand the importance of research ethics and actually how to write a research ethics application document. So those are all the courses in the graduate certificate of medical sciences. Now, um, I um, mentioned at the beginning that um, uh, another way of um, um, the course can help in your career is as a pathway to medicine um, in um, the fact that the medical program um, is allocating uh, up to 20 medical degree interview spots for the graduate diploma. So this is a facilitated pathway whereby the high achieving students who have a GPA in the course over six um, 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 have a chance to be interviewed uh, for the medical program. And considering that we have usually about 3000 applications a year for the medical program for our 118 spots. And we select 300 students for interview. Being selected for interview is actually a uh, quite an achievement. You actually um, um, jump over quite a few hurdles. Now, after the interview, um, you are graded uh, in a similar way as the other students. So your GAMSAT results and your portfolio are added to your performance in the interview as well. And then, you know, depending on how uh, you perform um, and how everybody else in the cohort is performing, you might be able to uh, uh, secure a spot in the interview or not. So basically, grad it does not give you uh, a spot into the medical program, but it gets you very close to it by actually allowing you the opportunity to be interviewed and allowing you to shine and to show what you can do and also to display your portfolio for consideration. Um, and uh, there are some other criteria to uh, be um, uh, met. Uh, you need a GAMSAT above 55, and the reality is that you need a GAMSAT, which very often is higher than 55. Um, it, more, it is more like 60 to be able to make the cut. Um, and uh, then all the other requirements that all the other students who apply for MITSI need to be met. Now, if you uh, enroll in the graduate diploma in the second semester, in July, as I mentioned, you um, because you finish before the round of application is due for 2022, you can actually apply the next year if you're one of the high achieving students. Um, if you enroll in the beginning of the year, for example, in uh, um, March for this um, semester one in March 2021, um, you would complete the course by the end, if you study full time, by the end of 2021, but you would have to be applying in 2022 for admission in 2023. So in some way, you um, it's... Um, you know, you have less of a wait if you um, start halfway through the year rather than at the beginning of the year um, with your study. But of course, uh, 
you know, you swings and roundabouts, you, you wait less until you can apply for medicine, but um, you have to wait up front a little bit more if you just finished your studies um, in, um, say, um, undergraduate studies in 2020. Um, and I'd be happy to take other questions if there are any about that. And that's about all. Thank you so much. Um, so I will just to quickly tap on about the applications process to Notre Dame. We are quite different to other universities um, in the fact that we have a direct application. So you aren't able to uh, select us as a preference or apply through um, any admission centre such as UAC. You do need to go onto our website and that's where you will be able to submit your online application to us. Um, provided that you have all of your documents required of your application, our admissions team will then be able to contact you within two to four weeks of an outcome. We don't have application opening or closing dates um, for the graduate certificates and the graduate diploma. Um, medicine is completely separate. Um, however, for the courses that we have discussed today, um, you can apply any time right up until closer to when the semester starts. However, we don't recommend leaving it that late. Obviously, the sooner the better. Um, the kind of documents that we will be looking for for an application is we will need your transcripts from your undergraduate degree. Um, and if you wish to provide any other documents such as um, a resume or if you have any achievements that you'd like to tell us about, there will also be an opportunity at the end of the application to provide any additional documents. Uh, within your application, there will also be some questions that we're going to ask you. And that's just about your you know, your motivation to choosing the degree, uh, why you've wanted to study at Notre Dame, and also just telling us a little bit about yourself as well as your career aspirations. So that way we get to find out everything we can about you um, and really make sort of a holistic decision towards um, getting a place at Notre Dame. <laughs>